Venga, vamos. Let's get building. Okay, first things first. Let's put the bottom of the frame together. Four arms, four screws, and four upright screws. Front and rear. Next on six columns. Quick tip, guys. You'll see these two hex screws here wondering what they do they attach a plate in the center here which you can't see it's just a, a strengthening um, plate for the arms it goes in between top and bottom plates there make sure uh, you stick that in there before you put your arms on otherwise you'll have to take your arms off and put it in again you can sort of just see it right there the great thing i like about building is you look it is a bit of trial and error uh, included in the sector parts is a tiny little yeah um, rubber spacer so what I've done is I've used these standoff mounts put it through the bottom there use that spacer because the hole for my 30 by 30 is quite large uh, and there's a bit of movement in that upright not sure if that's how it's meant to be however um, that does steady it and when you go to put on your MEPS ESC and it seems to all fit together quite nicely and should offer a bit of flexibility as well so let's put all four on and make sure it's all going to be good before we go any further so as you can see, like I just mentioned, this part's a bit fiddly, so I've got the rubber spacer just in there. So it's a matter of just putting your nail <laughs> next to your hex screw and screwing it up and through. If you don't have a fingernail, now's the time just to grow one a little bit. Very handy. And screw it up through there, otherwise uh, the rubber spacer is going to pop up with your hex screw. Now we've got our dampers on all four corners and make sure everything is free and it's not touching any of the carbon. Fits in there quite well. So the next thing we need to do is to put some more rubber dampers in between the ESCs and the flight controller and make sure our flight controller fits in as well. Make sure there's plenty of space there, which there is. I'm not too concerned about the top because my Walksnell avatar is going to go at the back here. So that's fine. All I need to do is put a couple more dampers on top there and bolt it down. And it's going to be nice and firm and there's going to be plenty of room there. So it's going to, have a, it's going to be able to breathe fairly well. Make sure your flight controller is actually facing the right way. Forward facing of the quad which it wasn't just then, but you'll see a small arrow on there, which means you want to go that way. Quite happy with that. I think uh, we shall start putting some motors on now. What I'll do now is tin up my ESCs and my power supply, solder on the capacitor at the same time, and on to the next step. Okay, ESC motor. Pads all fluxed up. Let's get get our power supply on. Quite an interesting design on the Sector D5. The XT60 plug actually gets screwed into the top there, which is actually a really good idea. So yeah, make sure you don't use the one that comes with your flight controller, as it's a different end. Another thing to be wary of is your capacitor. Just be mindful where you put it uh, as you may run out of room depending on if you're having a uh, putting putting a VTX down here. So if I just stuck that there it's going to be pretty much right in the way. So 
and we have to make sure it's reasonably short however still allowing me enough room to give it a bit of flex so I can move it out of the way if it does get in the way of our avatar I've got the capacitor XC60 power supply all soldered on dropped him back in on with the fly controller I'm just going to use my smoke stopper here and make sure everything is good before I go any further if I turn this on it won't beep because the motors make the beep uh, it should just um, show me a couple of lights on the fly controller and let me know everything is running correctly beep beep light light very good next I think we're ready to attach our motors another Another quick tip, MEPS kindly supply in their packaging for each motor um, two sets of screws, one's long and one's short, so what I've actually done is um, on the outside edge I use the long ones and on the inside here where you can see the motor wires coming in I use the short ones because they don't protrude past the housing but uh, give plenty of bite with my frame here. If you do use a long one and you do have a 4mm frame or something a little bit smaller, bear in mind you could push that screw up against that wire and it's going to be no good for your motor. She's going to go kaput. <laughs> I'm glad I'm making these mistakes uh, so you guys don't. Uh, don't forget uh, the outside part of the Sector D5X5 has this TPU. It's actually a two-part setup. You've got to, yeah, jiggle this red part into the black part of your TPU, and that's the end arm protector there. So your two long screws, bit of a tight fit. Make sure you just push them down into the TPU, uh, supporting into the TPU part there, and it will bite the motor. So it's a nice fit, uh, nice and snug. Uh, don't forget it. <laughs> Lovely. All our four motors on. These are the other motors that MEPS kindly supplied, so looking forward to putting that colour on my next quad. I thought I'd use the purple and blue ones, as they're going to go nicely with my yellow props that I've got as well. Now it's time to cut our motor wires and solder them on. Progress guys, soldering done. I didn't video that because you'd just be sick of hearing me cuss about my crappy solders. Um, they're pretty good, I'm not complaining, make sure you haven't bridged any of the pads. ESC down, flight controller down, joined up. These neat little attachments that go on the arms here to protect your motor wires. They're actually really neat, haven't used them before. So I have some 3M on the back, which I am just about to peel off so I can stick them down. Let's put our smoke stopper on and let's see if we can get four, whist four whistles from our motors. Let's hope they all talk to each other. lovely the next part of the build which will be attaching our TBS Crossfire Pro attaching our walk snail GPS and of course putting on our walk snail avatar HT kit V2 in the back should be good let's go okay onward and upward for sure uh, everything's going well uh, I've just soldered on my TBS Crossfire Pro. I'll just make sure it's bound and I'll make sure it's talking to the flight controller before we go any further in case we have some problems right here. If you want to see how you wire up your Crossfire to your MEPS uh, flight controller, pause the screen now. Welcome back and if you want to see how you wire up your GPS. Pause the screen now. And finally, if you want to see how you connect your walk snail avatar, you got it. Pause your screen now. And finally, if you want to have a good look at all these patterns, what they do, um, yeah, encore. Pause your screen. Okay, TX bound. We better shoot over to beta flight now and configure these motors and our TX and make sure everything's talking to each other. 
Of course you don't want to connect your props up completely otherwise you can have some problems. So beta flight, I'm sure you guys know how to do that already. What I what I tend to do is just drop a prop on, make sure we have it aligned properly. So number two, beta flight, we're going to power up number two, which requires some power. Power up number two, and because it's not bolted on, it should just spin simply uh, so we can see that it's spinning hopefully anti-clockwise. Lovely. One's good. Let's check this one here. Watch out for that USB cable. That's motor number four. This should be spinning clockwise. Which it's not. It's spinning anti-clockwise. So we're going to need to fix that one. Let's have a look at number three. Which way is that spinning? Number three is also spinning the wrong way. Last but not least. Which way is number one spinning? Number one spinning the correct way. So one or two are correct. Uh, three and four need to be reversed. In case you guys don't know how to do that, you simply go into beta flight the motors there. And you'll see a motor direction tab. Click on the motor direction, click on I understand, click on individually. So I'm going to select motor number four to be reversed and select motor number three to be reversed. Now motor three is spinning anti clockwise as it should, and motor four is now spinning clockwise as it should. As simple as that guys. Let's hook up our GPS. Okay that's our Walksnail GPS fitted. So hopefully you froze the screen prior. I've got all six wires connected. Let's jump into beta flight, make sure it's talking. We need to make sure we have selected GPS so go into your configurations tab. On the left there you'll see GPS. You want to select GPS, make sure it's on. I've got uh, NMEA. Auto bowed and auto config, save and reboot. Make sure that you have selected it in ports T3 and R3. So I need to go to UART number three. Select UART three on the right hand side, you'll see sensor input. So UART three needs to say GPS, save and reboot. Excellent, really happy with that. Everything's hooked up and talking to each other really well no problems at all now what I'm going to do is sort out my wiring heat shrink around my receiver here now I know that it's good sort out where the GPS is going we need to then install our Cadex FPV Hawks now avatar and we are nearly finished okay I'm running hot here let's see what's going to happen I haven't actually plugged this in at all I've got everything hanging out everywhere I've got my Hawks now avatar just hooked it up. I've actually hardwired the module in uh, as I'm utilizing the uh, nice MEPS plug here. So just the four connectors, um, 10 volt uh, ground RXTX switched on. Now we just need to bind them. Turn it on. Hopefully a light comes on. Okay, we've got a green flashing light, which is really good. So I'm going to bind them. We push that button in there. And it shows red, and then we push our button on top here ever so quickly. It beeps, which it's doing. And that red light should go to green, which it's done. Yes, we should have a picture. We have a picture, you little beauty. Double thumbs up, <laughs> success. She's all up and running. Now, gotta put it all together. Okay, there we have it, folks. Um, yeah, it sort of was uh, a piece of cake. I had a couple of little problems, mainly working out that the GPS mount goes on top. 
and the XT60 mount goes on top as well. I do really like how you can just plug this straight into the top here. That's really nice. Do we have some lights? I put some LEDs underneath there. You can see them just for added effect on the front. Really cool. A uh, really nice board to work with. Yeah, this MEPS board is really nice to work with. Uh, you can't actually see it, but it's hidden under there quite nicely. Fits in my Sector D5 really well. Super easy board to work on. Uh, plenty of pads. I've chucked my GPS on. As I said, I've got the Walk Snow Avatar. And uh, I've also got uh, TBS Crossfire. And I'm pretty sure there's one more UART free if you want to put something else on, which I don't know what that would be. I've pretty much got everything on here. There are also some pads for a buzzer if you want. However, I've got GPS, so that's my rescue scenario set up. Looking forward to trying these SZ2306s. Again, thank you MEPS. Please check out uh, their website below, guys. Pick yourself up some really nice props. I've had a fly of this already. Grab yourself some funky motors. Really, really decent motors these are, folks. I've got the blue and purple ones on here. They look really cool as well. Not that it's about looks, but they look pretty cool. Can't wait to get this Sector D5 out. I think I'll make that my next video. This one's been quite long and yeah, you may have actually switched off by now anyway, which would be a pity because it's going to be really nice getting this thing flying. Give us a rating out of five for my build. Let me know what you think. Is there anything you guys think I should have done differently? Thanks, folks. Thanks, Meps. See you again soon in the sky, hopefully for a fly. Bye for now. Flight controller and MEPS ESCs. I'll have links down below for all of those. I have just done a complete build of this. Uh, I haven't put this video on the end of that build, otherwise it would be way too long and you probably wouldn't hang around to watch it. So I've done a separate video, so please have a look down below if you haven't seen that complete build of this Sector D5 with all this cool MEPS running gear.